Dear representatives of the World Academy of Arts and Sciences and dear dignitaries of the Serbian Academy of Arts and Sciences and uh, esteemed participants of this, I think, highly interesting meeting. It's my great pleasure and honor to be able to address you with maybe a few thoughts about higher education, but education in general, where I think these first sessions will open up the topic because I think no one can, in, within 10 minutes, give any substantial contribution. So, but I would like to share a few thoughts. And for those of you who, who are in Serbia for the first time and maybe do not know enough about the University of Belgrade, perhaps I can give you a very brief snapshot of our university. It's the oldest university in Serbia. We have about 100,000 students studying in many disciplines. Uh, we are a comprehensive research intensive university. That is actually about 60% of the scientific output of Serbia is from uh, faculties and institutes of the University of Belgrade. So therefore, research excellence is incredibly important to us and there are several areas in which we excel. But I have to say that about almost half of our students are studying social sciences and humanities. And the contributions of social sciences and humanities unfortunately cannot be so easily quantified as those in natural sciences and engineering and medical sciences. So therefore, the, the strength of social sciences and humanities at our university, uh, I cannot present in such a way, but I believe that not only at my university, but at all universities, this uh, increasing gap between technological and social development will be overcome by representatives of social sciences and humanities. And that's why I see their role as being crucial in the future of all aspects of education and the development of society. I would like to dwell on one point, and that is how well we use the money for higher education here in Serbia. This is. Uh, you, some of you are maybe familiar with the Universitas 21 rankings, which do various analyses. One is taking the scientific output of a country and uh, actually setting it to its GDP. And in this respect, Serbia is actually an excellent performer. And I would not like to say that th that means we can do good science with little money. I'm just saying that we're very, very frugal with the money we get. So I'm taking the prime minister at her word that education will be at the forefront of the Serbian government and therefore I hope also the budget of the Republic of Serbia. So uh, moving on to, I would like to present four ideas that I think may have had a key impact on higher education. Of course, higher education can be only as good as the education that comes before. So the focus on primary and secondary education is really extremely important. And we are seeing some problems with the freshmen coming into universities that their knowledge is maybe not what it should be. So reforms and lower levels of education are crucial for higher education to perform in a better way. So if we go back a little bit, I think, uh, at least in Europe, the Humboldtian concept of university is the one that has had the longest lifespan and that only lately are we seeing some changes in how higher education can be perceived. But I think we can't knock von Humboldt in the 21st century, considering that this type of university will provide skills for a profession, but it provides people who can think and who can solve problems. And therefore, maybe what I am a supporter of is maybe Humboldt University 4.0 adapted to the 21st century and not forgetting because now I think we see higher education moving into a rather gray zone where it's difficult to distinguish between academic and vocational training. Uh, training for certain skills is excellent, it's fine, but it might be short-sighted for some of the skills that are being uh, addressed. And that's why I think von Humboldt was on the right track and that we need to adapt what's going on. Now, when we talk about this blurring of lines uh, 
we especially see a tremendous focus of many governments on applied sciences, that this is the key. And I won't talk about innovation ecosystems because I think you're all fed up with talking about innovation systems, ecosystems. The point is uh, there is only good science. Whether this science can be applied or not remains to be seen. And at universities, we need to do good science and certain aspects of this science can be taken to other levels, and if so, that's excellent. But we mustn't separate the two, and I'm also hoping at least that the new budget for research in Europe, Horizon Europe, will try to keep this distinction. Now, moving along, I, okay, maybe we'll get a little bit dark, but I have to mention Huxley and others who are seeing various visions of a society that is moving in the wrong direction on a global level. So are new technologies making us lazy? Where are we using our brains enough? I think this is a very big challenge to educators because we need to interest our students. But a typical lecture by a traditional professor is not the way to reach this audience. In the other, on the other hand, can our audience, who is used to other forms of communication, able to follow us? And this is what I find extremely disturbing. Uh, I'm sure that many of you have read the various studies uh, with various uh, instrumental techniques showing how the brain responds to certain types of information. We need people who can do, quote, deep thinking. Uh, scanning enormous amounts of information is very useful. It's a useful skill. Our uh, youth is very capable of doing this, but that means their brain is being trained in a different way, and we need to pull them in to the deep thinking. And that's why universities are so important. That's why a Humboldt-type university is extremely important to train people not to lose the ability of deep thought. It means having a retention time. It's mean being able to focus for a longer period of time that's longer than a tweet or a, a very, when, when I look at various articles on the internet today, what you see, what is the information? What is the key information you get? You get the title, the name of the author, the date, and then in parentheses it says reading time, one minute, three minutes, five minutes. I think that is something that's unacceptable that you decide whether you're going to read an article depending on how much of its time or your time it's going to take up. So we are faced with some really serious challenges in all forms of education, but I think higher education may be at the moment in the biggest challenge because we are, have people who are arriving already shaped by certain aspects of the digital. And uh, how are we going to overcome this problem? Obviously, traditional universities are not the answer. Institutions, especially if they're large, are very inert. They're very difficult to move ahead. And that's why smaller, younger universities can answer the challenge more quickly. But does that mean it's better? And uh, that's why we mustn't give up on the traditional universities. And I think one common point that most universities are uh, now trying to st struggle with, this is of the transition. And many people have mentioned transition today since the start of this meeting. But what I find interesting is it's talking about from changing one state or condition to another. And of course, in natural sciences, this is OK, because we know what state one is and state two is. We now don't really know what the next stage or condition will be, so we are transitioning into the unknown. And in this respect, it requires a foresight that maybe it is not easy to have, which means we have to go back to generics. We have to go to basic knowledge to enable people to be adaptable to what will come to the future. And that's why I see that universities, having gone through this dilemma of how to define what transition will be, are going for the Sustainable Development Goals. 
Why is this so interesting? It's interesting because we are going toward interdisciplinarity, we are going to problem-based solving, uh, uh, let's say, a problem-based uh, approach to learning, and this could be a way where we could overcome several issues. One is to transform teaching into an active mode, and the second one is to reestablish the connection between universities and the societies in which they operate, because we all know that the ivory tower is a thing of the past, although some academicians and, and, and university professors are still stuck in them, but this is a way of interacting directly, whether in your own community or at a global level. So if we look at other aspects of how are we going to adapt this new type of higher education, we have to look at the job market, and many have said there will be jobs that will be disappearing. And this is true. There will be, this is one of many articles which discusses this point, but what you can see is that we are losing mostly menial jobs. That means we're going to have people who are insufficiently, I'm finishing, educated, not being to able to move forward. Uh, the traditional professions are there, they are stable, and this is where the focal point of university is. And as far as the new emerging careers are, this is where we are seeing pockets of adapting on, the, uh, on part of the universities. So we need to make some very serious steps forward and to address the biggest skill gaps. The biggest skill gaps are actually in the area of what I mentioned, social sciences and humanities. These are people skills that we are lacking. And this is not really that you can put into a direct curriculum. On the other hand, we have some IT, very broadly defined IT skills, which can be addressed through formal, informal, or non-formal education. And of these biggest skills, only the one dealing with management is, has maybe to do with the potential academic training. So this is where uni universities need to fill in this gap. So when I say I see various problems as I finish, I've spoken about too many problems. But on the other hand, universities, I think, are the only solution to maintain humaneness in a, in a society that is developing too quickly in a harsh and cold way. Even though there will be uh, the forming of more and more elite institutions, uh, even though we have a more complex situation regarding our students, regarding um, their backgrounds, whether they are mature students there, whether they are coming from um, backgrounds that have not given them the tools to be successful in higher education. We will obviously have only the universities, not the vocational schools, which are fine and dandy, but the universities are the institutions that will save humanity from itself, I think, in the future to come. And therefore, all the contributions coming today uh, and tomorrow at this meeting are really, really crucial that we can share this knowledge and make higher education better. So I thank you for attention and I'm sorry if I spoke too long.